we're back for another episode of Game Day Grub. Ah, week three. Let's get it back. So the first two weeks we did uh, chicken wing recipes, chicken wing sauce recipes, just so you uh, had a little bit of extra, you know, weaponry when you go to your tailgates. But this week, because we're not only celebrating week three of the uh, of the football season, but we are also celebrating Oktoberfest. So, actually, hold on a second. <sighs> so what are we doing this week? Well, we're making some German food. What are we gonna make? We got some brats, got some kraut, we're going to town. Let's go. So what are we doing first? So we're gonna take our brats out of our uh, package, get them nice and situated. So in order to keep these from getting super dry, we are going to be searing them off first. We get them a little brown, and we throw them in our uh, handy dandy trusty tailgate machine that is the crock pot. Now a crock pot is a wickedly good way to easily make a lot of things. It works amazingly if you actually look use it right. Yeah, I know you might be saying, well, I use it right. I take stuff out of the package and I put it in there and then I put it on. When I go to work and when I get home, it's done. So it works right. That's not exactly what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is actually cooking something that's cooked for the right amount of time in a crock pot and also comes out and isn't dry or <laughs> needing a lot of sauce to uh, have to choke it down. Now I'm not saying that this stuff ends up tasting bad when it ends up dry, but there are easier ways to do that. And I'm gonna show you how to do it today. Now you may be saying that, you know, I cook brats on the grill. Why would I throw them in a crock pot? And that's, I mean, yes, obviously you can do that, but we're trying to get everything all mingled together. So you have like a nice cohesive dish that you know gives you a little filling so when you have all these Oktoberfest beers that you're drinking or any beers at all orange crushes tailgate stuff that it gives you a little bit of a base so that you uh, don't end up sleeping through the second quarter <laughs> <laughs> So this recipe, good for any sausages you want to do. I mean, it's it's gonna be good. We're using brats. You could go with kielbasas. You could go with, you know, any other sausage for the most part. I'd stay away from vice first, just because you might run into a German that may tell you that you're cooking it wrong. If you don't know what vice versa is, it's kind of like a breakfast sausage, except it's served in a bowl and uh, you're supposed to, <laughs> supposed to bite the tip off and suck suck the insides out so <clears throat> have fun with that I gave you one yeah anything normal any I mean Italian sausage work you can throw a lot of stuff in here we're just going bratwurst because it's Oktoberfest and uh, yeah we're not going this year so we're trying to find a, a way to celebrate ourselves so I just rotated those and uh, basically what you're trying to do there is you're trying to sear the outside of the casing so that you keep all the juices in now granted, we're gonna still poke a couple holes into it, but that's just to relieve the pressure. Because if not, you'll blow it out. And, you know, I guess that's okay, but then it loses all the juices and kind of defeats the purpose. So anyways, let's, uh, let's start cutting up this onion. Um. Ooh. And from here, we're just gonna throw these into our crock pot. It's off to the side, by the way. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like once everything's in there. Then we're gonna have probably like three or four cloves of garlic. The recipe will be in the description. And while we're at it, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. That way you get all of our content whenever it comes out. I'm not even gonna worry about dicing these up because they're just gonna melt away in the, in the cook. So what's next? All right, so got our tablespoon and teaspoon in there. So we have 
this uh, actually really good uh, Dusseldorf mustard that they uh, that they have at Wegmans. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a similarity there. Anyways, uh, it's 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 like a medium spice, but uh, it's really good. It dissolves in the things really well. So if you're making like a, you want a little kick to your salad dressings or anything like that, um, it's uh, Al Sturter. Al Sturter. There's a if you really want to just ask me and I'll send you how to spell it. It's got a castle on the label. But anyways, it's at Wegmans. And it's it's actually cheap. It's like $250 for the uh, for the thing. Yeah, I know. You can get like Wegmans brand yellow mustard for uh, like a dollar. So if you want to use that, use that. Anyways. We're going to use two tablespoons of that. And to go with that, just to really accent the mustard. We're going to take a teaspoon of uh, whole mustard seeds, which you don't have to use these, but you can. It's really up to you. If you want, you could just, instead of using the, uh, the Dusseldorf mustard or whatever mustard you want, you could just use whole ground mustard, like ground mustard seed, mustard. Rough mustard that has balls in it. There you go. So now once we have our mustard in there, we are going to uh, graciously let this crock pot borrow some of this. Um, preferably you want to use some German beer, but uh, that's your call. I'm not gonna hate on you if you uh, don't wanna go and get German beer. I mean, Coors Light will work, but you're not gonna get the flavor that you want. Uh, yeah. Now we're gonna put the sausages into the crock pot. See how they're starting to get nice and uh, nice and brown. I didn't do everything just because time constraints. So that'll be fine. Also, um, I actually had one start to split, so I uh, I poked some holes in all of them. Probably like three or four, uh, depending on what you're using. I use a knife, so if you have like a little like I don't know, cake tester or a thermometer or something that you would have on hand at a tailgate, hopefully, because you don't want to serve raw, raw meat. Uh, <laughs> use that, just poke a couple holes. That way the steam escapes and it doesn't, you know, boom, boom your your uh, your sausages. So I'm just going to start putting these in here. And we're going to end up putting some more beer in here just to cover them. Now that we have those in the air, we are just going to... Uh, Get our slaw situated. Slaw. We're gonna get our sauerkraut situated. And you wanna get everything out of this bag. If there's juice left, you're messing out. But uh, you can use the bag stuff, you can use uh, the canned stuff. It's up to you. I prefer the bag stuff just because I feel like it's a little bit fresher. But I mean, you can't really tell. Them. Throwing this in here, we're gonna cover the sausages. And obviously you know that if you're using a crock pot, you can start it in the morning, but obviously you'd be tailgating in the morning. So you should do this probably the day before. I mean, unless you're in the in the habit of getting up at two in the morning to start something that you're gonna eat a couple hours later. So you can do this the next day and then, then you really only have to pull it out of the fridge once uh, once it cools off and throw it in the crock pot whenever uh, whenever you're ready. Once it's warm, you can eat it. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, just donate a little bit more of this uh, delicious German beer to this uh, to this mix. It gets everything, and now I'm gone. So, it's okay. I feel like it. So the beer I used was Hacker Shore, which I really like, uh, but I'm drinking out of a Paul Anner glass, and I feel like that's like blasphemous. Um, I don't have a Hacker Shore glass, so uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, then you're just gonna st let this start cooking. And so I normally cook everything on low in the crock pot just because of the thing we talked about earlier about drying meat out. If you throw it on high, obviously once, once it comes up to temp, it's gonna keep going and then all of a sudden you're just gonna be boiling meat for hours at a time. And that actually happens if you leave it on low long enough too. So just pay attention to it, leave it on low, let it cook for a couple hours. Every once in a while you wanna look at it, just make sure it's not boiling. If it's boiling, uh, either take the lid off and like let it vent a little bit so some of that heat gets out, or put it on keep warm. Now the sauces I used were fully cooked bratwurst. Um, so yeah, they really only need to be warmed and then you can eat them. Uh, if you use like raw, 
obviously you should definitely sear them all first just so they get partially cooked that way it doesn't take too long to cook them in there but yeah partially cooked you want to just make sure you cook it through just so you don't have any issues nothing like having to run to a porter pot in the middle of a tailgate so the next thing I like to do uh, before we put the lid on it uh, is just throw a knob of butter in there just to uh, just to round it out if you uh, <laughs> You don't know I like butter. We're gonna let this cook for maybe an hour, hour or two. And then uh, we have some uh, little baby potatoes that we're gonna cut up and throw in there too. Just as like a little side thing. So you have a little bit of starch in there, you know. Gotta build that base. And that's what it probably looks like. And to you it probably looks like uh, some kind of goop. And it hasn't came up to temp and that's why there's a, uh, a glob of butter in there. But once, uh, once it does, it will come uh, all come together. But there you go. And we'll throw that on there and uh, let her bathe for uh, a couple of hours. All right guys, so it's been about three, three and a half hours and our German tailgating feast is ready to go. Now we just gotta put it together and eat it. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta, uh, we gotta give it a little bit of uh, zestiness. We'll put on this, this bun. So we're gonna use some of our uh, Dusseldorf mustard and we're just gonna Slather it on here. We're gonna get both sides. Oops. There we go. Now we're just standing them up just a little bit. There we go. As you can see, we're already kind of covered with some sauerkraut. We, uh, we just pulled some out and put it into a bowl so that it's a little bit easier than having to dip things in and out of uh, the crock pot. And depending on your rolls, so it'll either be something you can eat or eat fast. Because <laughs> uh, some rolls like to suck up juice and the uh, sauerkraut is nice and Nice and juicy. And then uh, all we gotta do is add a few of our potatoes just for a little bit extra starch. And if you don't wanna do this with a roll, it's easy enough to just throw everything into a, uh, into a bowl. Or if you're because you're tailgating, you could uh, <laughs> throw it into a solo cup or something like that. Uh, just so, uh, you know, everything is in one place. Well guys, hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, this simple and easy tailgating recipe. Not to mention, now you're kind of celebrating Oktoberfest too. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you get all of the new videos when they come out. Or you can just go to our channel and check out all of our old stuff too because we love it when that happens. I know that we're tailgating, but we're also celebrating Oktoberfest too. So, for me to you guys, eins, zwei, drei, zufa, prost, go team. See you guys next week.